Hello and welcome to a new Let's Talk Racing video and the first episode of Four to Follow where myself and Josh will be looking through some of the more prominent and maybe some of the under the radar trainers going into the national hunt season and picking apart their squads going into it. So between now and the first proper meeting at Chepstow in October, me and Andrew will hopefully be going through uh, plenty of yards over in Ireland and in England uh, and splitting some of the horses into three categories. One being a horse that's well handicapped, another one being a potential rocket, a potential superstar, um, a very exciting horse from that yard. And then in each stable, we'll be also highlighting two horses to follow. So if you do enjoy this concept, this type of video, please do hit that like button and let us know down in the comments. Any feedback is much appreciated. This video did take quite a bit of time, um, so everything is very much appreciated. So no better place to start from myself than Willie Mullins, the master trainer of Close Sutton and the master man behind many a Cheltenham Festival victory. But I'm trying to look away from maybe the main stars. There is obviously plenty in there, your Chacan, Porsois and Ergamines, but that's not what you're looking for. Starting off with the well handicapped horse and a horse I'm really beginning to love and it's MC Muldoon who's off a mark of 132 over hurdles. He won at the Galway Festival beating a nice horse of Barry Connells called a scary he'll be mixing it between flat handicaps and hurdle handicaps but i'll be very surprised if he can't land a big handicap hurdle off a mark of 132 the potential superstar is my man dysart dynamo i put him up in last week's cheltenham anti-post video i think he could be an absolutely superb horse he's a laid-back type we haven't seen the best of him yet he's two from two in bumpers and surely will take high rank over hurdles this year and two to follow from Willie Mullins Yard, another one of the maybe under the radar novice hurdlers this year, Dark Raven, who's won two from two in bumpers as well. He ran away with a Leopardstown bumper in their national hunt finale and also won at the Ferry House Easter Festival in a valuable sales bumper. He should take a fair bit of beating in a lot of novice hurdles. And also last year's Punchestown Festival scorer, Galwa, who I think has gone under the radar for maybe this year's Mayor's Hurdle. Owned by Kenny Alexander, who always loves these mares this horse ran very well throughout the entirety of the year maybe put in a backward step in the mares novices hurdle at Cheltenham when she was hand having to have a penalty that day but she performed very admirably behind Sky Ace over a trip probably more than her optimum and then was very good at Punchestown so there are definitely two to follow from the Mullins yard the first yard I'm going to go with is Ben Paulings, located in the Cotswolds in Warwickshire. And uh, the well handicapped horse I'm going to put up is Doc Road, owned by JP McManus, has an official rating of 122, was second to Ranch Hand, who's now rated 107 on the flat, before beating Carl Philippe, uh, Fergal O'Brien's horse, who's rated 125 on his second start. We've only seen him twice, but last day I thought it was a, a very encouraging way that he ground out the victory. Uh, I think a step up in triple suit and off a, hundred, uh, off a mark of 122, I think that he'll be winning plenty of races this season. Uh, the potential rocket from Ben Paulings, I'm going to go with fine casting. He was beaten uh, by Skytastic and uh, Might I, the Harry Fry horse, um, on the first two starts of his campaign. Uh, both good bumper horses uh, in their own right before winning a Newbury bumper in January was entered at the Cheltenham Festival in the champion bumper before running at Aintree did finish 10th that day but out of all the bumper horses in the yard I think Ben Pauling thinks the most of this one hence the entry at the Cheltenham showpiece uh, a one to follow is Gardino we've not seen much of him but he won a Kempton bumper in February and he'll be one of Ben's better novices uh, this season and then the final one to follow Raf Taval uh, if you're a long time viewer of the channel you know I do like this horse came over from France owned by Simon Meunier and Isaac Swade the French form looks really really good uh, he had close form with with Hitman and James de Burley he actually uh, gave Hitman eight pounds uh, did get an, an eight length uh, beating but that does tie it quite closely I'm sure Ben is very excited about him sometimes these French imports do just need a bit of time. He didn't get off the mark last season, but did finish close to onto victory. And I do expect a second season in England, maybe a summer to fill out, that he can go on and be a very nice prospect for Ben Pauling. Moving on to Gavin Cromwell's yard, who obviously had very good Cheltenham Festival success with both Vanillier and Flooring Porter, but neither of them make my four for this yard. Starting off the well handicapped horse, and it's the JP McManus owned Alpha Mix, who looks to be laid out for a handicap chase at some stage. He was a good 
progressive handicap hurdler, finishing fifth in the Coral Cup before going chasing last year. And it looked like it was going to take him a few runs to get his bearings. He's off a mark of 133 over fences now, and it wouldn't surprise me if he was to land a good two and a half mile handicap at some stage throughout the season. The potential superstar comes from the Punchestown Festival bumper, and it was my mate Muzzy who was a point to point winner and did it really impressively on his bumper bow, even though Cromwell's horses weren't running well at that time, and they're sometimes a hot and cold yard, so that performance can be upgraded. He then ran on the flat losing out to Phoenix Cowboy or Jer Lyons over a mile five in a maiden who's gone on to subsequently frank that form so that looks pretty strong and hopefully will be seen to high effect over novice hurdles this year. Two to follow from Cromwell's yard, no better place to start than Let's Be Clear About It, who was tied in with all the best bumper horses last year in Ireland, when he, you see he beat Enniskerry twice, who was a good horse for Barry Connell. He was beaten by Sir Gerhard at Navan before getting beaten by Kilcrush at Leopardstown before winning at the Fairy House Festival himself. He looks a really nice type and probably one that will go up in trip to maybe two and a half miles or maybe even three miles as the season go la goes on and should take a very, very high rank. And the other one to follow out of Gavin Cromwell's yard is Gabby Nacko, who was really well punted for the Martin Pipe and looked to be in with a very good chance, but was brought down at the first, so we wouldn't know what would have happened that day. He then went on to finish fifth in the big handicap hurdle behind Kashari at the Punchestown Festival and had some nice form tied in with some of the best novices, such as Bob Ollinger last year. He will go novice chasing this year, one would presume, and again, if we did have the novice handicap, Back in those days, he would have been one for that sort of race. Instead, look out for him in big novice handicaps because I'm sure he's able to land a very valuable prize. The second trainer I'm going to go with is Chris Gordon and the well-handicapped horse I'm going to put up is Lord Battlesley. Uh, official rating of 135. He's a big, scopy horse, looks made for a fence. Uh, won a Newbury novice hurdle uh, in pretty easy fashion uh, in March. A step up and trip and fences, uh, like many of Chris Gordon's horses, will see improvement. And I think 135, I think he's quite a bit better than that. Uh, the potential rocket, it's not a bumper horse, it's not a novice. Uh, it might be a novice chaser, Smurfy Enki, who I did talk about on the last video. Uh, won a Wincanton bun bumper by 18 lengths. I thought he could be special that day and I've followed him since. Uh, he went off favourite at Cheltenham at the October meeting at the bumper there. The, the field included Iron Maximus, who went on to win that. He finished fourth that day. He's run four times since, uh, winning two novice hurdles at Plumpton. Not fashionable, but uh, the way that he did it was very, very taking. And uh, I think he's a novice on the up, and he's a chaser to follow if he does go chasing. Uh, two to follow. The first one, Annual Invictus, uh, won three novice hurdles on the bounce before staying on fourth. Um, behind Soaring Glory in the Betfair Hurdle at Newbury uh, looks a staying novice chaser I think in a couple of years time he'll be running over three miles over fences another one to follow Storm Dennis ran behind Wonderwall at Ascot right at the start of the season and Brave Kingdom before uh, lining up against John Bond at Newbury was travelling very 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 well that day then the saddle slipped and unfortunately uh, unseated the rider all went peak tong that day um, but was going very well up until that point Won a Warwick bumper on the next start. I think he is very, very promising. So Storm Dennis and Annual Invictus are two to follow from the Chris Gordon yard. Well, it wouldn't be a video without me going on about my man Paul Nolan down in Enniscorthy. And he's the next trainer on the list, starting off with his well-handicapped horse. And I believe it might be Coventry, who's a decent dual-purpose horse for the yard. He won a juvenile hurdle at Nace before going on to finish fourth in the Grade 2 juvenile behind Jeff Kidder at Ferry House. He's been ploughing his trade on the flat and put in a decent enough performance throughout the flat campaign, getting him into a rating of the high 70s. He's off a mark of 121 over hurdles and he's quite a safe jumper as juveniles go so hopefully he should be able to win a handicap off that type of mark. The potential star in this yard is a mare I'm in love with and it's Jeremy's Jewel. Not Mrs Milner, not latest exhibition but the young bumper performer who won two bumpers this summer so far and is now being kept for a novice hurdle campaign. When you look back at her previous back form she finished fifth in a grade two mare's bumper and only her second start two years ago and she's been having considerable trouble with her wind between then and getting back to the course this summer. She's really put that right in those two victories and she's a real strong traveller and she's a nice type they'll be winning a lot of races over hurdles. Two to follow for this yard start off with Mercury Lane who's a horse that I think could take fairly high rank as a novice chaser this year and might be a horse to look out for in your late season handicaps 
even the Thiestes and Irish National. He's a st strong staying, good jumper. And I know the Yard think the world of this horse and are really hopeful that he may be able to take decent rank. He won a Limerick Maiden Hurdle by 30 lengths, having finished second to a few nice types and looks to be the type to improve for a fence put in front of him. The other one is Chu Kane, who has performed decently in a few handicap hurdles and off a mark of 120, could well be well handicapped going into this season in these mares races. She should be doing pretty nicely if she's held on to and brought into her races and look to be doing that nicely when finishing fifth at the Punchestown Festival. In those sort of mares handicap hurdles, such as the one at the Dublin Racing Festival where she finished seventh in this year, she might be able to go a few spots closer this time round of a favourable mark. The third trainer I'm going to mention is Harry Fry, and I think the well handicapped horse from that yard is our surprise with a mark of 124. A point to point winner, won a Newton Abbott maiden hurdle by nine lengths, visually very, very impressive, and I do think that 124 is leaning for the horse. I think that he'll be in the winner's enclosure again this season. Uh, the potential rocket from the yard is Booth Hill, uh, won a Kempton bumper impressively in February 2020. We didn't see him until December when he went to Taunton for a novice hurdle there, won that by by nine and a half lengths. Very impressive. The handicapper gave him a mark of 137 from one start over hurdles. He was impressed. I'm impressed as well. Uh, the two to follow, the first one's going to be Phoenix Way, who won a Huntington Potemps qualifier under Barry Geraghty uh, a couple of years ago in snug fashion, to, to say the least. Very easy, very cosy, classic Barry Geraghty in his pomp. Um, I was very excited to see him going chasing. He made a successful chasing debut at Warwick, beating Quick Graben and Stratagem over two miles, which I was slightly perplexed about. I thought that he would be a staying chaser. He then ran over two miles again, and then he ran fourth behind Protectorat at Aintree over two and a half miles. I think over three miles, that will be the key for this horse. A three mile handicap chase, I think that he's one to follow for this season. The other one to follow is Love Envoir, who won a two miles and four furlong Wexford bumper uh, for Sean Doyle, has since transferred to Harry Fry, been bought by the Noel Feely Syndicate. And my final trainer for this episode, one of four to follow, is Donald McCain. And I think his well handicapped horse may well be Manella Trump, who's off a hurdle and chase rating of 127. This horse was a horse I was looking forward to going novice chasing last year, but it didn't seem to work out for him. And he ended up reverting back to hurdles by the end of the year. He won a handicap hurdle before winning a two runner race uh, last time out over fences, which will have done his confidence the world of good. I think going forward this year he may be well handicapped in both spheres the potential star out of that yard is fruit and nut i believe and after a decent bumper campaign where he was two from two at northern tracks including winning a bumper under a penalty which is very hard to do over in england he was mid-division in the aintree bumper he wasn't knocked about that day and there was a drift well before the off so one might think that that wasn't the day he should be winning an awful lot of novice hurdles and could well be a good money spinner for connections up north Two to follow, start off with Bareback Jack, who's also in the Tim Leslie colours and was a really good novice hurdler last year. He downed Josh's favourite third time lucky at Musselburgh before finishing fourth behind my Drogo at Kelso. I don't think he performed to his best that day and I'd like to hope that he might be a better novice chaser this time round. And the other horse to keep on the right side of was the progressive filly last year, 5 and 20, who won an awful lot of juvenile hurdles before finally running out of steam in her last two efforts at both Aintree and Cheltenham. The Aintree effort when finishing third behind Mom Morale looks like strong form in the book in my eyes with Adagio splitting the two and she surely will have plenty to say about off a mark of 130. So between those four there should be some big money spinners for Don McCain up north. The last trainer I'm going to mention is Kim Bailey and I think the well handicapped horse from that yard is the Edgar Wallace. 140 grand store horse, ran six times, won twice, finished second twice, ultra consistent, won a bumper, won another hurdle. I do think that if they stick hurdling 132 is very reasonable but he could be one that's very exciting over fences. Uh, the potential rocket from Kim Bailey's, he's got plenty. Uh, the one that I was most impressed with was Kintara, who won a Warwick bumper emphatically, winning by 17 lengths, beating some horses who I know were, were held in decent 
regard. Uh, Maydall showed a really eye-catching turn of foot and uh, looks a very smart novice hurdler for the upcoming season. It was heavy ground that day uh, and, and the way that he cut through it was very, very impressive. The other one to follow is Sayadam, who's ran twice, won twice in the same silks, uh, was going to be another uh, future rocket. I thought I put him down as one to follow. Looks a very smart novice hurdler going forward. And the other one to follow, again, could be a potential rocket. It's Flirtatious Girl, who's ran three times, uh, won twice, including the listed mare's bumper at Sandown. I spoke to Kim Bailey on the 9th of February uh, before that Sandown run, and, and he said that she's the best one of our youngsters we've seen on the course of this season. So, Clearly held in very high regard. I suspect she'll go novice hurdling this year. And she could even make the picture of the Mayor's Novice Hurdle at Cheltenham in March. There you go. There's four horses to follow for eight trainers for the upcoming National Hunt season. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button and suggest any trainers that you want us to dissect over in Ireland or in England. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.